I'm Rachel, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I painted my kitchen table. So I also needed to touch up my coffee table and also a little kids table that I have outside. So I went ahead and did that as well. I needed to paint the whole entire kitchen table of course and I wanted to use chalk paint but chalk paint is about like $30 or whatever for a quart and I am not about that. <laughs> I mean, granted, this table was free, and so if I did that, basically it would cost me like $45 or whatever, or maybe $50 in paint and polyacrylic to redo this table, but I didn't want to do that. I've already sanded down this table before. I have a video with that because I wanted it to just be a nice natural wood color or wood tone, whatever, but my husband unfortunately got rings on this table, so... He also kind of did that on purpose because he thought it looked cool. So um, now it needs a good coat of paint. So I went ahead and painted it, but I made up my own chalk paint using some Plaster of Paris and calcium something something. But it didn't go quite as I had planned, but it did work well enough and I am very pleased with the end results. So to show you what all I did, I guess we'll just go ahead and go into the rest of the video. Here you can see my kitchen table. My husband definitely made a lot of rings on it and he also like soldered things on it and super glued things to it on accident. But anyways, I didn't wax this for a few weeks so that way it could dry out before I painted it. But I did go ahead and shellac the leaf and the kitchen table before I painted everything to prevent bleed through. And then here you can see on the coffee table, I filled in that little spot and I took down a couple layers of paint because I did a weird finish on it that I shouldn't have done, so I took down actually a couple layers down to my original paint layer that I did on this before. Um, so, and then this is my other table that I painted. My husband actually melted the paint right here when he was soldering on it. Here I used a plaster of Paris and some calcium carbonate. And I did this mixture, I followed a recipe, but I'm not going to share that recipe with you because it didn't work very well for me. I had to add more stuff to it and anyways I did like following the directions though because I didn't get any chunks in my paint until later when I had to add more calcium carbonate and plaster of Paris which I should have just added that to water and then mix it in with the paint but I just mix it in with paint and then mix it in with the rest of the paint and that was not a good idea so definitely mix it in with water beforehand and then I use this little handy container and used a measuring on it. That was really helpful. And I mix everything in there, but I wanted to tint this paint a little bit so it wasn't the same color as my walls. And I used just some craft paint to tint it a little bit. What this did though was help me to know when everything was fully incorporated. That was super helpful and I'm so glad that I did that because otherwise I would have had no idea when the Plaster of Paris mixture was fully incorporated. So you can see here I'm using a foam brush. I usually use a foam brush for larger projects. For some reason the paint was going on really slipperily. Is that a right word? It was just weird. The consistency and texture, it wasn't like how it normally is when I paint walls with this paint. So maybe it was a shellac on there, but I've used shellac on projects before and it didn't act this way so I'm not really sure but even though it was you know a decent enough coverage for a first coat on a bare wood project it was still just a weird consistency so I did go ahead and mix in more of the plaster of Paris and everything and you can see me here putting on a second coat um, which still didn't really quite have that good of a coverage and so I ended up adding more and that finally ended up working but I sanded in between each coat of course because at this point 
since I added so much more extra everything, I had to sand out a lot of chunks. But using just a fine 220 grit really works well. But here I'm using a thicker paint from one of my later mixtures and it covered really well. So I know that this is a white table, but the spots where it was all the way down to bare wood, it covered that really nicely. And here you can see where I'm sanding. This is maybe three coats in because that's pretty covered. It sanded really well. It came off really powdery and nice and I didn't feel like I was digging into the paint at all in any spot. It just sanded good, like a chalk paint should. So I was glad about that at least, is that the sanding of it was really nice. And here I'm adding another coat to the sides. I realized I didn't show you me painting the sides at all, so I thought maybe I should show you. So there you go. You're welcome, I guess. I think it took about five coats to cover the whole table as well as I wanted it to be. I like really full coverage on my pieces usually, and then I want them to naturally chip over time. Um, so, you know, that wasn't too bad. Usually I can get away with a little bit less than that, but I don't know, that paint was just weird and I was having problems at first, so I think that was probably why I had to do so many coats of paint. But for this coffee table, I went ahead and took a really fine grit sandpaper and went into all the little details and sanded everything really smooth because I didn't want there to be too much paint in any of the edges, any of the crevices, nothing. It needed to be nice and smooth so that way if I painted it again, I wouldn't have to worry about covering any details, especially since the sides, all the detail work is not wood, it's a resin and I didn't want to end up damaging that at some point. So I went ahead and polyacrylic everything. I did four coats on top of the kitchen table because I wanted to really protect it well. And then two coats on the sides because that's where I don't really mind there being any chipping. And in fact, I'd probably rather it chip some to make it look a little bit more rustic and homey, I guess. <laughs> I really wanted to make sure that the top was covered really well in case my husband decided that he needed to do computer work or something in the kitchen with me. And then on the coffee table, I also went and I dusted out all the little corners. On the everything, I used a damp, really, really damp rag first, and then for here, I brushed out all the little crevices. And now I'm using an, a little brush to do a really thin layer of polyacrylic in all the details because again, I didn't want to fill anything in too much with that polyacrylic because that's something that'd be really difficult to remove at a later date once everything had hardened. So making sure that everything is really fine is very helpful. And I only did two very thin layers on the details. I did three good layers on the, or three regular layers on the top of the coffee table, which is thin anyways, but you know, I really spread it around on the details to make it extra thin. And then on the legs and the sides, I only did two layers also, just because I can deal with a little bit of wear and tear on those. I don't, I like it better, so whatever. <laughs> but here's the finished look. I like it quite a lot. I don't know why there's some weird waves in it though. That's the only thing that is just different about this that I'm kind of wondering about is why there's some waves to it. it I don't know. Can you see that? I sure see it, but it doesn't bother me. I think it's fine. Oh, and I forgot a little spot on the edge there for the leaf, but oh well, I'll fix that eventually. You can see in this one spot, I already have a scratch on it. I think that must have happened when I was bringing the table in, but there isn't any other damage on it any any other place. And I've had this painted for three months now, I think, and it's doing really great. It's holding up to my husband working on it and stuff, even though he's not supposed to, but it's holding up to it. And I think that it looks really nice with a really simple little tablescape thing on there, whatever. Usually it's covered in bowls of fruit and stuff. I have those over to the side, but usually we have a bunch of fruit and vegetables from the garden on it. But anyways, it's just really pretty with some candles and I wanted to enjoy this one moment when it's actually looking pretty. I do love how it turned out and it's really nice. I love having a white table in my kitchen. It just makes me happy. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. But if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe because I do home DIY kinds of videos using chalk paint fairly often enough that you might like this channel. And I also do videos on houseplants and natural living. If you like the video, please hit the like button and I would greatly appreciate it. Have a really great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.